What will you do? Assume that gamma is three times alpha. Okay. In the beginning of this lesson, I told you when there is a change in volume without changing the mass, that will result in a change in density. So, change in density with temperature. If I heat this metal rod, this aluminum rod, its mass will not change, but its volume will increase. As a result of the increase in volume, the mass per unit volume will now be less, and that means the density will decrease. So, if you heat a volume of air, the density of that air will decrease. And if the density of air decreases, that air will rise. You see, that's a very important phenomenon in nature. Hot air will rise and cold air will sink. You can create an air current by heating one part of air. You can do the same thing in water. If you heat one part of water, the hot water will become less denser and rise. Cold water will sink. And we will see this phenomenon in the next part of this lesson. All right. When an object is heated, its mass remains the same while the volume increases. And as a result, there will be a decrease in density as the temperature increases. Consider an object of mass M. If V0 is the volume and D0 the density of the object at 0 degrees Celsius, we can write D0 equal to mass divided by volume. Is that right? D0 equal to M divided by V0. The density at zero degrees Celsius is its mass divided by its volume at zero degrees Celsius. Well, that gives us M equal to V0 D0 or M equal to D0 V0. Now, if Vt is the volume and Dt the density at t degrees Celsius, then what will an equation for dt will look like? dt will be mass divided by vt. Will the mass change? No, it will not. The mass is the same. But the volume changes from v0 to vt. Therefore, I can now write, well, do you remember we said V2 equal to V1 times 1 plus gamma T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is delta T. And our V1, in place of V1, we have V0. So we can replace this V sub T as V0 times 1 plus gamma delta T. And what happens here? V0 and V0 will cancel. So density of that object at a higher temperature, T degrees Celsius, dT equal to D0 over 1 plus gamma delta T. We can write this in a simpler form by using the binomial theorem. Well, I don't think many of you know binomial theorem. I'm going to give you simply that approximation. Using binomial theorem, this can be approximated as dt equal to d0 times 1 minus gamma delta t. So, density at a higher temperature equal to density at 0 degree Celsius times 1 minus gamma delta T, where gamma is the coefficient of volume expansion, 
and delta T is the change in temperature. Well, there is a small exception for this rule, the change in density. Now, what is that exception? Now, here we, according to this equation, every object decreases its density as the temperature increases. What does that mean? It means the density decreases, oh, the density increases as you cool down the object. Is that right? Well, there is an exception. Let me spend a couple of minutes to talk about that. That exception is water. Well, if you cool water, its density will increase, just like any other substance. If you cool down this aluminum, its volume will decrease, and that means its density will increase. Now, when water is cooled down, its volume decreases, that means its density increases, so cold water will sink and warm water will rise. But for water, this particular property now is true only until the temperature reaches 4 degrees Celsius. That means as you cool down water from the room temperature to 4 degrees Celsius, its density will keep on increasing. But if you cool down water from 4 degrees, as the temperature lowers further, the water, in, instead of contracting, it begins to expand. Now, that is the behavior that you see only for water. This is called an anomalous, anomalous behavior, something that is different from the normal. When water is cooled down, from 4 degrees down to 0, instead of its volume decreasing, its volume begins to increase. And that is the reason why when you put a bottle of water in the freezer, when it becomes ice, the bottle breaks. Why? Because when water cools down from 0, from 4 degrees Celsius to 0, instead of its volume decreasing, its volume increases. Now, this is a particular characteristic of the crystal structure of water. The hydrogen bonds that hold the water molecules together has this peculiar property, thereby the spacing increases as the temperature reaches, uh, approaches the freezing point. Now, we will not go into the details of it, but there are some very important implications of this phenomenon. Why? Why is that? You suppose on a very cold day in a very cold region, a lake or a, or, or a river can freeze. Now, when it freezes, where does ice begin to form first? Will ice begin to form at the bottom of the river or at the surface? Well, ice begins to form at the surface. Why? Because as the temperature of water decreases below 4 degrees Celsius, its density, what happens to density? Density decreases. Now, how does the density of water change? If I draw a graph of temperature against to density, now, this is 4 degrees Celsius. If you cool down water from room temperature to 4 degrees, its density will increase. There you are. Suppose this is 20 degrees Celsius. You cool down, the density will increase, and the density of water is maximum at 4 degrees. If you cool down water now, its density decreases. So, the density, water has a maximum density at 4 degrees. When water begins to cool below 4 degrees, its density decreases and will rise. 
That means it rises to the top and there it freezes. So ice begins to form at the top of the water first. Now this has great implications for life in water. You see, when it is very, very cold, if ice begins to form at the bottom, that will actually kill all the life in water. Fish or any animals that live in water will find it very difficult to live. Because ice begins to form at the surface, that will form as a barrier between the very cold air outside and the water below it. That will keep the water below warmer, thereby keeping a good environment for animals to flourish. You see, look at nature's dance. Nature plays such enormous tricks to keep its own safe and sound. All the aquatic animals are able to survive in very cold climates because of this property of water. That is, it has an anomalous behavior. When it is cooled down before, below 4 degrees Celsius, its volume begins to increase. Density begins to decrease. All right. Let's now use the concepts we developed so far to solve some problems. All right? Okay. A steel rule has a length of 30 centimeter at 20 degrees Celsius. What is its length at 100 degrees Celsius? Alpha for steel is 11 times 10 to the negative 6 per Kelvin. Well, what all we need to do is the equation we developed L2 equal to L1 times 1 plus alpha delta T. Delta T is T2 minus T1. We got our initial length 0.3 meter. We've got a change in temperature 100 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius, that is 80 Kelvin. Remember, a difference in temperature measured in Celsius and Kelvin are exactly the same. So 100 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius is 80 Kelvin. Alpha is 11 times 10 to the negative 6 per Kelvin. L2 equal to L1 times 1 plus alpha delta T. We have all these values. So replace these quantities by their values and use your calculator to evaluate this. Okay, that should give you 0 0.30026 meter is the length of that steel rule at that higher temperature. That means if you use a steel rule for measuring length, as the temperature increases, the length measured will not be accurate because the length of the ruler changes. All right, let's look at another problem. A bridge 100 meter long is built of steel. 